Hi guys. Turning into another lovely sunset to close out the our one weekend of winter in Denellan, Florida, and I uh, <coughs> we have the whole crowd here tonight. Uh, we actually have some visitors. Well, the great blue heron. I don't know. He just flew away there. So who is this? We have a green heron. Good lord. All right. So. Uh, we have our three sandhill cranes. Our great blue just flew away. Just had a little green heron show up. Don't know if you can see this little dot of white. That is a uh, a white ibis is joining the uh, sandhill cranes. Never seen the white ibis here of course we have our friend the, the little blue the little blue is here and I guess out here we have the uh, claiming the, uh, the dock. oh we have a kingfisher now good lord uh, we have the anhinga claiming the uh, perch, sometimes known as the water turkey. We just had a belted kingfisher fly over that way. We had the little green heron fly over that way. And uh, a minute ago we had a wood stork fly through here. Uh, what happened to that wood stork? I have never seen a wood stork. Little dog, is the wood stork over here or not? So I'm sorry, he he's hiding back in the woods. So uh, I don't guess we can uh, make our way to the wood stork. There he is. Let's see if we can get the wood stork freaking him out. So we actually have a a wood stork. That is the first wood stork I have ever seen in Denellan, Florida. So we have the and we really have the uh, the collection of birds here. He's all alone. That big boy. Uh, very rarely see them this far north. Come on, little dog. Sancho. Sancho. Ah. Get. There goes the wood stork. He's flying off. I guess we're scaring off the... Come on now. All right, so this is the most fruitful bird watching I have ever had. So we have sandhill cranes, great blue herons, little blue herons, little green herons, white ibis, wood stork, and hingas, and... Uh, belted kingfisher. Now I don't know where the big white egret is. Whether he's an egret or a, a great heron. A great white heron. There seems to be some sort of uh, debate going on. I don't know where he is today. Everyone else is here enjoying this lovely sunset. Ugh! Lovely sunset over the end times, just hanging out with my birds. It's just me and the birds today. Me and the birds. Uh, you very rarely see these white ibises alone. That's pretty weird. They're usually in pretty big flocks. 
but it is Sunday, January 21st, 2024 out here in <clears throat> our little winter wonderland and uh, I guess one more night of winter here in Florida and uh, which I'm sure the people in New York would really be, uh, I'm sure their heart bleeds for us down here in Florida bird watching in the apocalypse <sighs> so the doomsday trailer is really wrapping up uh, we got the last bed installed all of the nightstands all of the lamps are in uh, the only thing left and the two things left in doomsday trailer we need a bathroom vanity I need to manifest and I need to uh, I need to sand and shellac the uh, baseboards and uh, doomsday trailer is wrapped up at least on the inside and uh, I'm already freaking out what in the hell am I going to do with the rest of my summer that was a little blue calling it a night. What am I going to do with the rest of my, I'm sorry, my winter? Uh, you know, when I came down here, I can't believe it. I've already been down here half of my stay. When I, when I came down here, I thought that it was going to be about two or three weeks of work that I had in Doomsday Trailer. And I was actually kidding myself that uh, I was going to start writing for Medium.com again. That I might actually start the interviews up on uh, up on Collapse Chronicles. That I would have all of this time in my schedule to uh, start writing and interviewing and being a journalist and all of that and instead I have managed to spend the first half of my time down here working on Doomsday Trailer but that is really is wrapping up so uh, I have to figure out what to do with the second half of my time here in Doomsday Trailer but half holds you can be pretty sure where I am going to be uh, each day at sunset you know, a little dog and I are going to be hanging out down at the dock with our with our feathered friends. Hanging out. You wonder how many thousands of years these birds have been. Now, of course, a hundred years ago, there were probably a hundred times as many birds. Uh, this a hundred years ago, uh, this would have been a solid blanket of birds. Uh, but, uh, I'm down here enjoying our water birds while I still can. I understand that water birds are the most fucked uh, of all the fucked birds on the planet even more than birds of prey that it is water birds uh, that, that are that, that are just fucked uh, on, on every level uh, now the, all of these freshwater birds is because you know a major major reason is the wetland drainage how uh 
what is have 85 percent i think 85 percent of the wetlands that were here 500 years ago when honky got here i'm i'm i think 85 percent of the wetlands that supported all of these birds have been obliterated off the face of the planet uh, you know the noble savages never really figured out how to drain wetlands uh, now this wetland here is has actually been created by honky the <coughs> Uh, I'm still a little unclear about this. I think the main channel of the actual river is through that tree line. I, I'm thinking that where I have actually been sitting was uh, man-made. Uh, may or may... Oh, there's the white... Uh, the white heron is just hanging out. I see. He's just hanging out right with the... That's pretty weird. Uh, that the sandhill cranes are just letting him hang out with them. Uh, okay, well that's good to know. See, the sandhills are vegetarian, so they're not in competition with the herons and the egrets. So this whole time, I thought that uh, he wasn't here. He's been here the whole time. Just hanging out with his vegetarian buddies. But, uh, I don't know if I'm ever going to learn whether this actual wetland right here was created as part of that goddamn Florida barge canal environmental tragedy that good old Richard Outhouse Nixon saved all the birds from. Uh, and anyway, occasionally humans actually create wetlands. That's, you know, kind of like what I have done at, uh, at Bugs in a Jar Farm where I have created wetland habitat. Uh, where none stood before. So, of course, the, you, you, you know, the trade-off on that uh, <laughs> is uh, in creating a wetland, you obliterated off the face of the earth whatever kind of ecosystem was here before the wetland. But, uh, you know, I, I don't feel guilty about it. Uh, it, it, at least at Bugs in a Jar Farm. So I have created about a half acre of wetland. I, you know, I've got 14 acres, and uh, <clears throat> so I have created about one half acre of wetlands on my 14 acres. And it is hands down <clears throat> the most biodiverse, uh, rich ecosystem uh, on, on my property. That generally speaking, uh, wetlands are going to draw in their fellow earthlings. But anyway, the sun is setting. And the wind is coming up and the temperature is dropping. So he's gone. There's Mr. Here's Mr. White. Okay. I thought that you had abandoned us. So let's see if he goes and picks off the little blue. He don't need to go eat up the little blue heron.
I don't have anything for you. I'm just hoping I have a last minute treat before nighttime gets here. Sorry, Mr. Bird. Little dog and I, we are calling it a night to head back to Doomsday Trailer because I have to. I have to. Uh, to uh, cook the little dog his chicken and rice. I have to go home and cook for the dog. What do you think, little dog? Are you ready for your chicken and rice? Got a couple more minutes of color here. Now you gotta be careful not to leave the sunset at the critical time. So many people, uh, they come down here and watch a sunset and then they leave three minutes before it peaks. So, uh, a few more swallows of this margarita. Oh yeah. End time sunset margarita. So the sunset will continually move to the right, uh, which I am thoroughly enjoying. The sunset moving to the right. I've mentioned that to a couple of people down here on the dock about the sunset moving to the right and they have no clue what I'm talking about. Like what do you mean the sunset moves to the right? And I'm saying well it's after December 21st before June 21st and the sunset is going to move to the right and then on about June 21st it's going to be over here and then it's going to move back to the left and uh, <laughs> I've had people look at me like you know like like this dude is uh, just talking absolute blithering crazy shit probably trump tards looking at me when, when i when i'm talking about you, you know the the rotation and revolution of our planet going through the cosmos and and the tilt of the earth uh they they, they look at me like uh clearly I have eaten the brown acid for trying to explain the tilt of the earth <laughs> and the way the earth spins and, and goes around the sun while it's tilting and uh, the, the, these Trump tards uh, who've probably been living here for 30 years are uh, li you know, li looking at me like I have lost my fucking mind. Uh, no clue what, what I'm talking about, that the sunset moves to the right from December 21st to June 21st, and then it turns around and moves back to the left. Kind of give me one of these uh, sideways glances, like, uh, how did he get out of the damn home? <laughs> oh, the unbelievable inability to, uh, you, you know, to follow the most elemental third class, third grade science. Listening to Terrence McKenna talk about that last night. Uh, 
<laughs> just how people uh, are, are these clueless fucking morons. This the most basic science they they completely reject. Uh, that that any third grader should be able to understand, and, and and then they come up and they make up this unadulterated horseshit uh, coming out of their fucking mouths. And uh, you know why why we just tolerate it? I don't think I really played that one about when he was talking about the political correctness police you know when when you hear some of this this unadulterated horse shit spewing out of these people's mouths but uh, that, that have no basis in reality uh, and, and you're 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 so scared of being labeled politically incorrect that you keep your mouth shut because you don't want to suffer, uh, he calls it goring the ox. Of uh, uh, he doesn't use the term, term clueless morons, but goring the ox uh, of whoever it is uh, when, when they're talking this shit, this obvious shit uh, coming out of their mouths, and and, and, and that we're so conditioned by the political correctness police uh, not to correct people. Uh, I, I, I won't get off on a tranny rant here. I really wish uh, that we could hear Terrence McKenna weigh in on the whole tranny and uh, pronoun debate. He would have all kinds of fun with it. Uh, that we're, 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 we're just so terrified that we're going to offend somebody that we let this unadulterated horseshit uh, just, just, just out there and, and, and nobody calling it out uh, on the right or the left. Uh, anyway... I'm going to wrap this up. There goes the Ibis. He's calling it a night. All right, guys, are you going to... It looks like the... It looks like... The Sandhill Cranes are thinking about... All right, guys, are you going to go home or not? Are you going to stay here tonight? Everybody's left except the sandhill cranes now. Maybe they're going to just sleep here tonight. Oh well. I'm off to Doomsday Trailer. Bye guys.